Good morning. I'm excited to be here and uh, kick off this incredible summit that um, Arnaud has just mentioned and be in front of you guys to talk a little bit about what the future of sports technology is. So as Unir mentioned, um, I'm a lecturer in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science with a dual appointment in Mechanical Engineering at MIT. I'm also the co-founder and managing director of the MIT Sports Lab. So we work with pro sports teams, uh, organizations such as USOC, the PGA, um, as well as brands such as Adidas and Short Optics to tackle the challenges at the intersection of sports and engineering. Um, so I thought I'd share a little bit about uh, what we're seeing across all of these different disciplines. So <laughs> first though, what the heck, MIT does sports? Yes, believe it or not, uh, at MIT, sports are part of the course. So we actually have one of the broadest athletic programs in the United States, and we're number two for academic All-Americans. Just last year, um, in the 2017-2018 season, we uh, had 108 academic All-Americans, 25 athletes of the year, six rookies of the year, six regional coaches of the year, and one national coach of the year to name a few of the stats. So, we love our sports. But for the name being Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one would think that that is what we think. Technology is the answer. But actually, we believe technology is a tool. And if it is not solving the right types of problems, it is not something that should be used. As we think about that, as those industry themes were mentioned before, we're seeing the quantified athlete, which is gonna lead to the quantified self. These smart venues are gonna lead to the next generation of smart cities. We've got next-gen fan engagement. What does it look like in stadium versus how do I start to generate that next generation of fan who is not currently, perhaps, in stadium? And then, of course, for OTT, it's not do we continue with broadcast rights and just wait for OTT to go. The question right now we're hearing is when do we cut and just go straight to that? Mass customization from the brands, how do we ensure that you and you and you all have a customized experience and clothing and apparel that fits your particular needs? And of course, as you heard, eSports. These are just a few of the trends. But first, let's start with the Moneyball effect. How many of you have seen Moneyball? Okay, if you are not raising your hand, you should watch this movie. It's fun. Um, currently, there is a sport going through the Moneyball resolution that we saw in MLB, the late 90s, early 2000s. What sport do you think that might be? If you said basketball, you would be correct. Um, I'm looking at folks from the NBA up front here. They know. Um, why do you think that might be? Think about it in your mind. What happened in 2014? 2014 was when all of the arenas started to be outfitted with player tracking camera systems. It wasn't until 2015 that we had a full season of data. Now we've got three full seasons where we're able to do the types of advanced analytics that were never able to be done before. Now, if you are the best in the business, where do you go for advice? What we're seeing pro teams do is actually go to others who are the best in their other leagues. They're also talking to military special ops individuals to understand what are the best practices and how can we start to train and help our athletes perform at their peak. Not only are younger players coming in the pipeline, how do you develop them without getting them injured? But our most expensive assets are also our oldest assets. So how do those training, training uh, regimens and protocols change as an athlete spans their entire career? What is this? Exactly, eSports. Um, it's hard to ignore. Right? It's growing at such a rapid rate. What is interesting about esports 
is that we now have individuals whose every move, every click is tracked. And they're having to make very quick decisions. So there could be very interesting insights in decision making, cognitive load, with every click, every movement tracked at a very high resolution. What do you think all of these athletes have in common? What? They are the best, exactly. They are the best. What else? If you said data, much like we were talking about earlier, we know more about these athletes than ever before. We are monitoring them in training. We are testing in the lab. We're tracking them on the field. Now we've got all of this mountain of data. Does that automatically lead to better insights? Just throw machine learning algorithm on it? What we're finding is that we have got so much data. Teams and companies have so much data, and it's living in silos that we're at a point right now where it's more data smog than better insight. And the real question is, what do we even need to measure? This is something that we're continuing to work on. And does this product actually do everything it says it's doing? If I wear something on my wrist, can it tell me about my hydration, my sleep pattern, my nutri customized nutrition plan? There's so much product hype going out there. It's hard as teams are looking to adopt technology to solve a real problem to understand whether or not it's worth the trade-offs because now I just have more data and it's another thing I'm potentially strapping on my wrist of my athletes. So the question is, do I even adopt it? If you're running into any of these things, you're not alone. We're seeing this worldwide. But, as mentioned, it is an exciting time. It is changing at such a rapid rate. Six months ago, we didn't see half of what we're seeing now, and in the next six months, we're going to see the same. It's going to continue to change. C product categories that didn't exist three years ago, like the connected individual, are just now really coming to the mainstream. So let's go back to these athletes. What's that next generation look like? What is the athlete of the future look like? How are they gonna live day to day? They will be waking up to their personal dashboard. They will know exactly what they need to do for the day, how much water to drink, what to eat, how they're doing in recovery, and they won't be wearing a wearable. Their clothing will have all of that embedded. And when they put it on, it will turn on and start monitoring whatever has been selected to monitor for that point in time. Because fabrics of the future are going to act like your smartphone. These advanced functional fabrics and fibers are going to change how we are able to monitor and capture our daily lives. And this is already being done. This is a FOA. Advanced Functional Fabrics of America. Um, there is an AFOA facility right, so, uh, right outside uh, Cambridge. And I know this is tiny, so I'm going to just read it. Moore's Law for Fibers. Fibers that have the functionality of semiconductor devices, yet are produced at fiber lengths, uniformity, and cost. Fabrics as a service. We all know SAS. This is FAS. <laughs> Fabrics that see, hear, sense, communicate, store and convert energy, regulate temperature, monitor health, and change color. And we're already weaving these embedded 
electronic and semiconductor threads in with fibers today. So that future athlete needs a pair of shoes for a particular event, no problem. Right to the manufacturer, they're able to quickly have all of that data stored on an individual, pull it up, go straight to 3D printed, 3D knit, customized, uh, high performance gear, and as it's sent, it will then self-assemble. I think over the next few years, we're gonna see every athletic record broken. These athletes have more information, and as we go through, I challenge you guys to predict where the next record is gonna be broken. So, a small glimpse into what's to come, and it's exciting time. Thank you.